Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to show you how I built this fancy canopy for my raised bed garden because yesterday and today was 115 degrees here so pretty hot and steamy and it worked out pretty well the tomatoes are not wilting, the blossoms are there, the fruit is still there uh, so knock and wood, two days of success and uh, since yesterday that was an emergency project because it was getting really hot really fast so I, I didn't have time to film it so today I'm going to work on the side panel and it's exactly the same principle as the top of the canopy. Basically what I did is I bought an 8 foot section and I think it's about 3 quarters of an inch here on the side by about an inch and a half on the top. And I cut it in a half. So I got two 4 feet sections right here and I put them down in an angle. Next I drilled one pilot hole right above the trellises and then I secured it with an uh, inch and a half screws on each side and I did the same thing on the other side of the raised bed garden and here I put two screws on this side because it didn't feel very secure so I chose to put two screws on each side next I drilled pilot holes on each end of the four feet section so I drilled one here one on the other side and I repeated the same thing with the other board. And next, I put an inch and a half screws, but I didn't screw those all the way in. I left about, I would say, uh, a quarter of an inch to stick out. And this is uh, where I'm gonna attach my shade cloth. So let's go inside and uh, where I have AC, and I will show you how I did it, guys. So this is the brand of fabric that I'm using. This one in particular, it's uh, 6 feet by 15 feet, so it's plenty for a raised bed garden. And it was $24. It blocks 75% of the sun, and it's uh, both sun and heat blocker. And now I will show you how I'm going to take care of the fabric. And since I already finished the top cover for the raised bed garden, I'm going to show you how I'm going to work on the side panel but uh, the principle is exactly the same as what I did for the top. So the side panel, I need a side panel because uh, at one point during the day the sun blasts right at the peppers and two of the tomato plants. So I'm going to put something on the side as well. And so we, you start by measuring and what I've done and what I always do is, for example, I need uh, the shade cloth to be four feet wide. So I measured four feet but I left three inches on each side of the four feet section and I will show you why. So here is the mark for the extra three inches that I left on each side and the reason I need the extra three inches is so I can fold it up and make sure that you fold once and then you fold twice and put a safety pin and this fabric it's very easy this fabric it's very easy to uh, to fold so you just have to push it so you don't need to put too many safety pins so i'm going to put one more over here and one in the middle just in case i don't need it but whatever's like this and i will finish the rest of it and now i'm going to do the same thing on the other side and it seems like a bit of work but it is totally worth it because it's gonna last you for a long time. You're not gonna have to you're not gonna have to do this next year again. So I'll finish the other side and I'll be right back guys to show you how I'm gonna secure it. And I will do it with a sewing machine, but I'll, I'll show you another actually easier method. But since I have the sewing machine, I'll use that. But I'll show you how you can do it if you don't have sewing machine. For this next part, I'm gonna use the sewing machine. And uh, after I'm done uh, sewing, I will show you how you can do this without the sewing machine, you don't need one. Don't ask me why I have one, this is the second time I'm using it. Anyway, but after I'm done with this, I will show you how you can secure the fabric without sewing machine and without any sewing skills at all. Not that I have any. And now that I'm done sewing, I will show you how easy it is to do it without a sewing machine or any sewing or seamstress skills. All you need to have is a stapler and it's always good to have safety pins there so they can guide you but you don't have to as I said this fabric folds very easily and stays in in place you take your stapler 
cooking and go one by one. There you go. And then to secure it more, you can do in between on this side. So there you have it guys. You don't need to have any special sewing or seamstress skills to do this. Just a simple stapler. It's not something that you're going to wear, so you don't have to worry about that. And uh, it's pretty secure. There you go. So if you don't have a sewing machine or you don't feel like sewing by hand, uh, stapler is a pretty easy and uh, quick fix. All right, now I'm gonna get back to uh, working on our project. For the next step of this process, you're going to need a couple of those because if you just stretch the fabric through the screws, it's just gonna destroy it. It's not, go it's not even gonna last you one season. So go to Home Depot and buy those guys. And now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna put them. It's a bit noisy, just wanna warn you. Before I put them, you need some hard fabric. So this is the material that you can put fabric on both sides and then press it and the fabric sticks to it. But you can use like a piece of uh, old pair of jeans, for example. But I have this left over here that I saved. I don't know why. And for two of these guys, you need four square pieces. Got it? And a half. And here is how it's done. So you take your sheet cloth, take two of those guys, put one on the bottom, very close to the edge, like this, and one on the top. And next, it's gonna get a bit noisy. You kinda eyeball the middle of the square, take a hammer and start beating it up. And there you have it, a perfect little Hole. You remove the excess fabric and then take this guy, the taller one, and push it through. Alright, and the reason I'm putting this is because this is very loose fabric, it's almost like burlap, so you don't want it being all flimsy and falling out. So, a little extra work, but it's worth it. Are your tomatoes worth it? Sure, they are. So we put the tall guy on the, bottom, on the bottom, we put this guy over it, and by the way, I bought the, the whole set from Home Depot, it was $5, and then you take the flatter one, put it on the bottom, and then you take the pointy one and put it over, and then start beating again with the hammer. And there you go guys, that's just perfect. Now it's gonna go through the screw and it's gonna stay nice and tight and strong and you just, for aesthetic purposes, just cut off the excess fabric here. So it looks pretty. There you go guys, beautiful, isn't it? All right, now I'm gonna do the other one. So as far as the top cover, in order to make sure that it's nicely stretched, before you put these guys, you take your fabric outside and stretch it as hard as you possibly can. So, uh, well, first put two of the corners, these two sides, and then go on the other side, or vice versa, it doesn't matter, and stretch as hard as you possibly can. Just keep pulling, don't worry about it. And as you pull, try to penetrate right here where the screw is. This way, you know where to put the uh, your little, look at this, I stretched it. <laughs> anyway, but this way you know where to put uh, these little guys. You see how I made a mistake the first time? This is where I put it, because I measured, I went inside, I put these guys, and then once I got out here and started stretching the fabric, it turned out that this is way too far, I needed something closer. So this is when, well, I guess we learn from our mistakes, huh? Uh, <laughs> I never did, but Anyway, I did this time. That's why when I got here the second time, I stretched it, I put it in the screws, I, lead, I used a little uh, Sharpie to mark where I need to put uh, those guys and went inside and put the new ones. So don't make my mis mistake, just take the fabric out, stretch it over to see how far it has to go and then go inside and put these guys so you don't waste them because this is just a complete waste. 
I was gonna tell you that I put this one just for decor here, but it doesn't look like a decor, so it wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna get away with that. And uh, before the final reveal, now that the panel is done, I want to give you one very important tip. Um, when you build something like this, make sure you take under consideration how tall you are, because as you can see, I'm much taller than the thing. And, um, and yesterday, I almost poked my eye out. So um, either make it taller than you, or wear safety glasses and a helmet, or be careful. All right, and now, the big rebuild. All right, here is our panel. And as I said, very easy to attach. And that is the wrong side. And there you have it, guys. The Ritz Carlton of Raised Bed Garden Shade. Uh, it's very nice. I'm sure the my tomatoes are going to absolutely love it. And uh, tonight I'm going to remove it because I want the tomatoes to get some sun in the morning. And also I want to provide some airflow for them at night so they don't suffocate in there. But that's it, guys. Very easy to make, very easy to install, and very easy to remove. And now that it cooled down, according to the weather app, it cooled down by one degree in the past two and a half hours. So it went from 111 to 110. Um, I love how they put 110 degrees sunny and then they have pink flowers, hot air balloons, sunflowers. They make it sound like it's so much fun to be 110 degrees. Anyway, now that it cooled down by one degree, I'm gonna go jump in the pool. And if you guys have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please give it the thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And if you haven't yet, please subscribe to my channel. That would mean the world to me. Thank you so much for watching, guys. And until next time, happy gardening.